What's up everybody, I'm Randy. We're back here at Bike Works. We're going over the 1950 pan head build we've been working on for a little while. We had to take a little short stop in filming just for a couple of reasons. But where we last left off, we just installed the rear fender and the sissy bar. So we've done quite a bit of work since you last seen anything filmed. So what we're gonna do today is just kind of go over everything that we've done, everything about this motorcycle, the features on it, and kind of some of the parts that we used. We're super close to wrapping it up. We just got a couple of little things left over. So here we go. So what we got here is, this is our original sissy bar that we modified and mounted back to it. This was on the original chopper when we very first started. So what I've done is I've mounted an LED tail light and license plate with light ring in it. Um, so what we got is all these weather pack connectors, all of our wiring is by design to go underneath so you don't see much of it. So we got a connector here runs through the bottom side of the fender back up into the back side of the oil tank and then we've got another weather pack connector up there so if you ever had to service it you could unhook it at the battery unhook it back here and you could take off the sissy bar the fender and off the frame without any issues or having to cut your wires and resplice them all right so moving on to the middle part of the bike here what we've done is obviously we've chromed a lot of stuff on this motorcycle it's by design you know we wanted to go for an old school kind of 70s early 80s chopper look so in true show fashion everything had to be chromed so we're running this chrome v style passenger peg mount we did extended pegs so that when this rider's on the back she can get a lot of clearance out out away from the rider um, just kind of a comfort thing so what we've done here is we've mounted a, an oil filter onto it. These bikes didn't originally always have one. And I chose to, instead of running braided lines, I fought with these things, but we finally got them all mapped out and routed. But these are hard chrome lines. Every oil line is done that way. Uh, we're not gonna have any issues as far as, they, as far as it turning brown or you know the, the fraying of the braided stainless. So I just kind of like this school, this look. So with the motor, we're running the Paco valve covers. We're running a SNS intake to an SNS Super E with just a small uh, air cleaner on it. We got chrome push rod covers. It's got new lifters. This motor's been bored and stroked. It's running new flywheels. The bearings have been upgraded in the case. Uh, I had a guy up by Kansas City build the motor for me. His name's Jack Larson. Does a bang up job on everything. Everything really always works, you know, first time. Uh, unfortunately, through our chroming, my original cover, cam cover, kind of got messed up so we had to switch to this aftermarket one it's still pretty neat and kind of trick looking but I had an 8 fin on here that's what I really wanted to run we're running the stock cast oil pump we did go ahead and mount an oil gauge into it uh, always one of those things I always like to run I'm a gauge watcher by nature so I like to see what's going on with it we're running the original transmission it is a four speed I went through and built it so it's all new needle bearings everything's new in it gaskets so down here on our linkage, I went ahead and modified all of our linkage to make it fit. And all you pan head guys and old school watchers know that this brake lever usually sits about right here. And in my opinion, it's always in the way. It's always just cumbersome to work. So what I did is I took about two or three different brake levers off an old pan head and some of the newer ones. Um, we re-chromed the stock mounting bracket here, but I rebuilt, redid an arm and reworked this whole linkage in pedal to where it comes out in front of the pedal now more like a traditional bike you would have now it's just more ergonomic um, this bike isn't this necessarily just going to be sat in a garage or just taken to shows this dude's looking to ride it so i really wanted to make it as comfortable and easy as possible so again we got extended mounts up here and then the brake levers pushed forward so it's out over the front you push it down with your toe you don't have to work back and forth between the peg and the brake lever to stop so here's what we're running. Well, obviously we're not running a distributor anymore. We're running this Magneto. In my opinion, it's gonna be old school. It's gotta have a mag. Uh, I don't really care if you like it or don't like it, but personally, it's just my preference and what I really dig. So this is a Morris G5. My opinion, it's the best one on the market. I love these mags. They're really heavy duty. They're really, they're really just, once you set it, I never have to worry about it again. Uh, running some kind of old school, but these are new. Got these from Lowbrow Customs. Um, eight millimeter plug wires. All right, so you guys have probably already seen it when we did the first shot, but this is the tank that we're running. It's a little small Mustang tank. Doesn't hold a ton of fuel. It's somewhere around three gallons. Um, just running a straight Pingle style fuel pet cock. Um, nothing fancy there, but in my opinion, it just kind of fits 
On this one, I reworked all the mounts you would have saw in all the fab work. Um, we are rubber lined underneath of it so that when that thing's set and mounted and this bike's running, you're not gonna hear a bunch of rattling. So just kind of one of those things that I like to do to make it a little bit more, I don't know how you'd say, um, fine. Because, it, you know, I've had these bikes and that tank will sit there and rattle and it's just on metal and it just beats up and then you have paint running down and, you know, it just, it just doesn't look good. It doesn't sound good either. All right, so now up to the handlebars. What we got going on here is I'm running a built well, um, just a single cable line. It is just a single. It's not a dual with one plug left out. Uh, I just really like these, these throttle linkages here. Basically, it's got a sleeve in this hardware for it, single cable. Um, I wanted a little bit more of an old school look, so we're running these spoon style levers. Um, and something I absolutely love is these Cole Foster grips. Um, I just really dig the way that they look. There's a lot of options. I felt like this best fit with the pegs. Um, we are set up and ready to go. Everything works like it should. We're running just a set of low one inch bars on the two and a half inch risers with square tops. Um, it's got really nice bushings into it. They're good and tight. So this should be a really good setup for longevity. So anyway, if you remember, if you remember when we did the handlebars, you might remember noticing that it's a, it's a manual lever. So there's no reservoir or anything up there. So one thing that I did, uh, I haven't ever really seen it. I don't know if I ever have. Not to say that it's never been done, so I'm not taking credit for this. So what I've got here, and if you remember back a couple episodes, this is a, a Buell rear master cylinder. So what I've done is built linkage and ran a mechanical cable, like you would have seen on this bike originally if it had a front drum brake, down to a lever system. All right, so this is how it works. When you pull the lever up top, it obviously pulls this lever that I built mounted to the frame, which then pushes up and creates hydraulic pressure in the reservoir, coming out to a hydraulic line. Out we got, now we got hydraulic front brakes. So here's our reservoir. We went ahead and color matched it to the frame. That way it didn't stick out too terribly bad. Um, I'm not looking to just make a huge statement with say, look at what I did. But once you get to looking at the details of the bike, you'll notice that that's kind of trick and just kind of not normal. So what we've got is on the banjo bolt for the brake line is where our front brake light switch is. So it's just a banjo bolt with a pressure switch inside of it. We've got it wired. All these wires run through the frame. So everything is pretty clean and hopefully seamless looking. All right, so moving on down here to the linkage in the generator. Uh, not a big deal, but a 1950 Panhead would have had a six volt generator, shorter, a little bit different dimension on it. So what I've done is drilled out the case, drilled out the cam cover to fit the later style generators. We converted to a 12 volt system. Um, what I've done with all the covers is just bought a, a bunch of just unbranded generator covers in chrome so that we could chrome the thing. Uh, it comes black, didn't want to strip it all apart to just have it chrome, so we, we decided to cover it. Underneath the end cover is a solid state uh, generator end mounted voltage regulator. All of our wiring runs through the frame at this point, then it'll run back and come up the old seat post channel. Out here to our foot controls, if you remember back during fab work, this is the controls that I, I cut up and rearranged and, and redone, then we just had them all chromed. Now it's going to be a foot clutch system here. All right, moving on to the other side of the handlebars, again we've got our Cole Foster grips here. Um, back in the 40s, 50s, they, the wiring for the headlight and the horn was all mounted onto the handlebars, it was all internally ran. So we just got kind of a, a reproduction style high-low switch here. Then on the front side of the bar is our horn button. Later we're going to supply power to it and you'll be able to hear that. But everything's done up here on the handlebar, it's all internally wired. Uh, just for a really clean look and it's going to be super ergonomic for the guy. So everything's within reach. So this is the most interesting part of the whole bike, I think. Just one of the, there's a lot going on in this one little area. So we'll start at the top and work our way down. So what I've done is where the old coil would have mounted and or a wiring channel where all your wires would have came together. I've built a bracket and what it does is it mounts the horn and then this open hole here is going to be the kill switch for the magneto. Uh, instead of having to reach around the wires and, and hit the button on the side, we'll have a button right here and this will ground the mag out and it'll, it'll kill it. So this has still got to get chrome, so that's the reason why it still just looks silver right now. A couple, couple more things left to do. Moving on down here, we've got, we're going foot clutch hand shift. And just something I picked up from the, you know, the old school style bikes is these glass doorknobs and these ornate 
shift knobs. I absolutely just love these. This is a 12 point glass door knob. Um, I bought from a guy, said it was from the 30s out of an apartment building in New York. Um, who the hell knows if there's any truth to that, but I just really dig it. It's not like the cheap reproduction ones you can buy now. It is an old one. What we've done over here is we've mounted a key switch back here underneath the oil tank. Now, the reason why I do a key switch other than just having it all wired up is, yeah, this bike's a mag bike. You don't need the key to start it. But I do like being able to turn the lights on and off without the bike running and or having just a little toggle switch somewhere. Um, I just like the way it looks. For me, it feels like it could have been factory and, and I just really like that style and that, that relationship to it. All right, so moving on to our clutch here. So what I've done is this is a 1950 pan head clutch basket. Obviously we converted to belt drive. I just like them. Um, the chain would have been pretty gnarly, but I just really like these belt drives like this, these inch and a half wide ones. So what we did with the clutch is I shipped it out to a company called EFM Auto Clutch in Ohio. What they do is they remake the internals on this. So the way that this system works now is it's RPM based. So as RPM picks up, the clutch will lock up. Much like when you were a kid, if you had a go-kart and you just smashed the gas, that it would pick up and go. But if you stopped, it sat there and was ready to go. So with this system, you can either use the clutch or not use the clutch. And the reason why I did this is this is a nice bike. Okay. Not very many people run foot clutches anymore, um, so if you're not really savvy on how they work or comfortable with riding one, this kind of gives you the, the leeway of being able to have a, a foot clutch bike and also have the safety of not having to have your foot on the clutch. Say, around here we live in a country where there's a ton of hills, ton of uphill starts and stops. <clears throat> so what this will do is just downshifts accordingly, leave it in first gear, and as RPMs drop, it'll disengage the clutch. Then as RPMs pick up, it locks up. There's a little bit of a buffering zone there. It doesn't just automatically lock up and send you, you know, send the thing up into a wheelie stand or anything. So it, there is a little bit of a buffering there. It's, it smoothly engages and disengages is what I'm trying to explain. Now, if you're looking at this, trying to figure out what the heck that kooky deal is, Unfortunately, for aesthetics looking, being as this is a kickstart only bike, there's no ring gear for a starter. So you have to lock this up to mechanically start it with a kicker. Then after you do that, you have to disengage it and the clutch works appropriately. So this isn't bolted on permanently. So what I've done is this part slides through the old breather channel on the pan head. The cases, it'll bolt up on the other side. So that'll keep that from being able to do this. As you flip it over, you see I've mounted a, a bolt to a nut with a washer, and that's going to ride on this clutch, or this, this bearing rather, and that's going to let it just free spin. So as you can see here, as you turn that in, it presses in, as you turn it out, it pulls out. So with this mounted onto it, it sets inside of this bearing, inside the hole here, so now it can't go up or down. Once it's bolted up and nice and tight, um, it won't be able to go anywhere and it'll be very functional. Now what we've done is either a spade or a devil tail or whatever you want to call it on the end here just for a little bit of aesthetics. And I'm obviously going to change this. I'm going to build a, you know, cut it off and do something a little bit more ornate. So as you do it, you can run that in. It'll press this in, allow you to start the motorcycle by kicking it and then loosen it up. It'll take it out. Clutch works appropriately. So all I've got left to do is really just adjust this thing out. Um, it's not like a standard clutch. It's a little bit trickier to do. So I really need to take some time and get it adjusted appropriately. Because once these are adjusted, you really don't have to mess with them ever again. So moving up here underneath the seat, there's nothing special going on here. All my wires have been ran through the frame. We do have fuses on our power supply stuff, grounds. Um, nothing great here. We just done the normal, you know, 12 volt into a 6 volt style battery here. But the one thing that I do particularly like is I've always wondered what I can do with this old seat post channel. You know, a lot of guys will plate this over and slick it off. I kind of like the way the original stuff looks. I like all these edges and lines. So to make the whole cover and be somewhat functional, I've took an old dipstick and I still got to mount it. But I'm going to put a washer on the end of this and put a little seal around it. So if you've ever been out, especially if you go to out of state or go to rallies and you have to have an identification card, say like registration or insurance, things like that, you'll now be able to put it into there 
and then put it into that old seat post hole. So now it looks covered, it looks clean, kind of looks a little bit trick, you know, nothing fancy about it, but there's not very many people doing that. Then you just pull it up and you can access all your cards and all your information here. Or if you had a little stash tube essentially for whatever you wanted. All right, so here's what we got going on now. I'll show you the two different seat pans. If you remember back to us making these, what they look like. Um, I'm not a big fiberglass guy. I'm not the best in the world at anything, but this is my, you know, this was my take on how to do it. So what I've done here is this is all hand laid fiberglass. We've got a metal strap going through it for structure. So this will be seat number one. Obviously we're set up for a king and queen. So what we're going to do is we're going to build all the foam up. Um, we have a solid skirt around the outside. We're going to go diamond stitching through the center. Now I know a lot of you guys ran piping and buttons and stuff. Um, we're going to just bring it a little bit more modern with a classic style and classic feel to it. So we're going to have fringe seams all around the sides and we're going to have just a, a nice good probably quarter inch pile of uh, diamond stitching. So here's seat one or two, however you want to take it. Um, it'll be carpeted on the bottom side so we don't scuff or scratch anything. We're going to do this in a, a brown, a really, really dark chocolate with a little bit of black mixed in, brown leather seat. Um, and just hopefully it's going to come out really pretty cool. So there's seat one. All right, so here's the other seat. This is for you guys that don't like to take a passenger or if you're looking to show and you don't necessarily want a king queen seat on it or what have you. Um, but what this is going to be is it's just going to be a little day tripper style seat. You know, something a lot more low slung. The foam's going to follow the profile of the, the backbone coming down over the fender, up the sissy bar. Now we're not going to do anything different with it. It's going to match the other seats. So we're going to have a solid strap skirt. We're going to have French seams and then diamond stitch through the center. Um, I'm just a really big fan of the diamond stitch. We kind of went back and forth as far as the pleats or diamond or what, but um, again, we like what we like. So we're running diamonds on this one, but that's pretty much it. I'm going to reshape the tang on the front, send these suckers out and get them covered. We've already got the leather for it. So it's just a matter of time now. Um, on, on the back side or bottom side rather of both these seats, you'll see here, we've had to hollow out the center. So it's a dome style seat. It's not just flat. We've had to hollow it out and fiberglass from the back side. So what it'll do is it'll clear this and the battery and not have anything rubbing or anything hitting on the bottom side. Now granted, it will be covered nonetheless. But I just don't like things sitting there rubbing on each other. It always causes wear, always causes them to look like garbage after a little while. And this bike's gonna be rode, not just sat on a, a show floor or anything like that. So um, anything that we can do to procure the longevity of the finish, we're gonna do it. So here it is out back. If you remember the fab session, this is our tiny little tail light that we done. It's LED, so it's just a trim ring and a red lens built the back space or a back plate for the LED lights to sit on. This is our plate mount. It's got an LED light into it. So we've got it dummy wired. I want to save this battery as long as I can so I won't fill it with acid or really put it onto the bike until we're ready to kick it out the door. So key on and there it is. That's your tail light. Here's our plate light. Obviously I'm not up there right now but as soon as you hit the brakes this will light up even brighter. Um, the reason why I chose to go LED is if this sissy bar decides to rattle, I mean it's a rigid, so it's going to rattle. It shouldn't blow these LEDs out like it would an incandescent, and it's going to be really, really bright and should last a long time. So one of the reasons why I like that, another reason why I like a little bit more modern twist on these bikes, I like them to look old, but function like new. All right, so starting from the back, these are those pipes that we built. Obviously you guys saw that fab work, they were just been re-chromed. On the back fender, we got a little lace in the paint work. Moving up front, obviously this is all of our chrome work, engine work we already went over. Now get a little detail on the tank here. We've got endless lines on the side of the tank. And then because this customer's um, requested, well I didn't really request it, I kind of threw it in there. There's a big story behind this bike, but this is the customer's name we airbrushed onto the side of the tank. You'll see the other cool part that we did on the other side. Moving down the front forks, these are six over front forks, all chromed to our front fender. There's some artwork in the fender also. We've got uh, more lines, kind of like a starburst type fade on it. It runs from the front to the back. It's all been striped out in silver with a little bit of flake. 
Obviously not running any turn signals or anything. We just got an old high-low headlight. I like the yellow tint to it. Thought about switching to an LED there too, but you know we can always change that later if we want something super bright. Coming along the other side, this is the part I was telling you about. Now this particular bike was his father's back in the day. Um, unfortunately, he had, he had since passed away, so now his son is redoing the bike and he's gonna ride it, but it's his dad's nickname on the other side. This side of the tank on this panel, we've got fish scales. Um, we wanted to kind of incorporate all the old school style paint schemes um, on the front, wrapping underneath the tank to the back. We've got just squares. And you can see the squares a little bit better once we finish around to the back side and the top side of the tank. Uh, frame's been color matched. It's all root beer with um, Egyptian gold metal flake. Everything is natural cast finish on the aluminum. On the top of the tank, we got a little bit of lace work all through here. Um, just kind of paneled out. I wanted to, I just wanted to break it up a little bit, throw this cream around on it. And then down here to the bottom side, this is those squares I was telling you about. I just think it looks kind of neat. All the panels are a little bit different. All right, so onto the rear fender, this artwork on the side that's not covered up by the seat. We got more root beer in the sides of these. It's some more lace work. Might be kind of tricky to see. I got a dark shop and it's a rainy day out, but there's more artwork into them. Then the sissy bar has been painted the same color as the frame, obviously, and then we got another little patch back here that's got the starburst style lines into it.